Welcome back everyone to Miranda Patron Art. I'm Miranda Patron and I am back with you today to do a fun heart mandala. This is the one that I meant to get out for Valentine's Day, but you know, life gets hectic and things don't always go according to plan. So better late than never, right? All right, so this is my website where you can actually find lots of the tools that I use in my videos. I have a shop here, but you can also get to the painting tutorial videos on YouTube. You can leave reviews. You can go right to the color palette, which is actually where we're going to go right now to look over the color palettes that I chose for this lovely little heart. All right, so my latest video was Pantone and spring colors, so that's what's first and foremost because that was what I looked at recently. But here we start to get into some of the lovely reds and purples and all the Valentine colors that I chose to look through and save. Look at these delicious ones, oh my gosh! Um, for our heart for today. Now, the heart that I'm using is just a Dollar Tree item, it's a piece of MDF board. And that's what we're going to be painting on today. And I used a huge array of paints and colors, different products, different brands. But here is the place that you are looking for. If you're looking for some color inspiration, definitely come on over here to my Pinterest color palettes. Yay. <laughs> and there'll be a link actually in the description of this video to help you find it a lot easier. Alrighty. Starting with MDF from the dollar store, actually, I put Liquitex for the background, magenta, using a sponge brush, and it just puts it on evenly. And then I used about a two inch circle on my compass, just eyeballed the center, but you can measure. And I'm using Prisme, the PBO paints, and I'm just actually going to pour it in the center. The less that you work with this paint, the better. And by work with it, I mean not using it, but I mean painting it or moving it, doing anything with it. So I just want to get it into my circle position as fast as possible. So I'm just going to swirl it around here, just kind of using that circle as my guideline. And then I'm going to have to kind of make sure that I get it all the way to the edge here, and I'll probably have to use a tool just to wick it over to the edge here a little bit. Like I said, don't work with it too much. It'll ruin the effects. So you can see after it's dry here, you get this awesome honeycomb effect. So this is Deco Art Rose Gold Metallics and I'm putting it on with an acrylic rod. I think this one is about a half an inch. And I'm just going to go all around the outside of this large heart with the big dots here to just kind of outline it. I had to pull the string out of there, but I'm really just going to dot right over where that hole is. And these ones are actually the matte metallics. It comes in kind of a larger jar. But they're still really shiny. And so you can see kind of with using this tool, I gotta plump them up a little bit and dab it. I just have to dip for every single dot basically, or it doesn't put down as much paint as I need to get a good even dot. But you can go back while those are still wet and just kind of swirl it in and it'll go back into shape. You can see as I'm dotting, that one's kind of flowing into a circle. I'm just working my way around the top of the heart here. And this is kind of the easy part, it's just kind of meditative dotting because you're just following the outline of the heart basically. Not necessarily mindless, but 
you know, just dip and dot, dip and dot. I hear a lot of people call it Zen, Zen painting. It is pretty, pretty enjoyable. I don't use these acrylic tools often just because I find them difficult to work with, but if it's something, you know, you want to practice with, it does make great dots ultimately. And as long as the paint consistency is fairly thin, you should be absolutely fine. I'll show you from the side here in a minute that there is a strand that comes up with some of the metallics and like the extreme sheens where you just have to make sure that that paint string drops down in to your piece as opposed to moving off to the side. So I'm going to show you here. I kind of swirl the tool a little bit sometimes too to help break it. But see that strand, you just have to make sure that it plops back down in to your, the dot that you're creating. These look so tasty, these paints. Oh my gosh. But you see what I'm talking about with that strand. Okay, so we're just working down towards the point of the heart here. And you can see how thin this wood is too, so I wouldn't recommend as far as background paints um, doing really thick, heavy, wet paint for the background just because sometimes this MDF board will, it'll bend. I don't know if anybody's tried these with pores, acrylic pouring or fluid art, but when it dries it'll sometimes bend the wood, which is unfortunate. And so for your background, don't, don't dampen it too much with paint. I, I just went over it with one coat. there on the point. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so it doesn't look uneven there. So, so I don't want to ruin the paint. I did want to use my compass again and so I'm just using this silicone piece to, <laughs> to stab it. No, to put the point of my compass in here. And I want to do kind of a guideline out in the edge here. But you can see it just goes in the silicone. Devin Dodding has those at her shop. And I can put a link for that in here probably too. So this is my oval dotter that I've been using. Just so you guys can see, it is short handled. I guess a couple people didn't look at the size when they purchased them and were a little frustrated that it's shorter handled. But it is, it's a shorter handle. But I just make sure I grip it farther down like a pencil and makes these great oval dots. And the other end makes little petals too, so I use both ends. There was a period where I went through just dipping and dotting everything from screwdrivers to skewers to pencil erasers to actual pencil lead, I mean you name it, just so we could see how budget friendly we could make this dotting thing go. <laughs> so I put my ovals in a plus sign around my large PBO circle here. And then I'm doing on the 45 degree angles the other ovals in between. And I'm switching now. I have an angle spot detailer and my etcher. So right now this is the angle spot detailer paintbrush. Yes, it's a paintbrush. I'm literally just pushing down harder at the top, working my way around each of these ovals. And as you get towards the bottom, if you want smaller dots, you just let up on the pressure as you go around. If you're using a dotting tool, you just let the paint run out off your tool. You don't have to switch sizes. You're going around an oval, so it's not going to be a lot of dots. And we're going to do this white around each of the ovals that we put down.
And I'm thinking as I go around, I'm looking at it, I might do two rows of white around each of these. And I'm just stealing it, the paint now from the oval. It's still wet. But definitely, I know you want to make sure the outer dots are dry before you start in the center, or you could start in the center before you did your dots around the outside, but I just kind of wanted to give myself an outer limitation. Kind of like when you draw in guidelines, except I'm just using part of the painting for it. So I know not to make my design that far out from the center of the mandala. So now I'm going to show you with the etcher. I have to steal a little bit more paint to go around with this one. Just because obviously I'm taking it from the oval dots, you're not getting as much as if you were dipping it from the palette. But dipping from the palette you get a little bit more, so you can see that dot's a little bit bigger maybe from there. But then that was just two dips to go around. So it's really not, there's no magic tool, it's really just what tools you practice with, what you're comfortable with, what you're comfortable holding. I really like angled tools because I can see what I'm doing, so it's helpful with the brushes and stuff for me to see around them. Just going around all eight of these ovals with one more ring of white. And this is just the titanium, straight up titanium white. It's not metallic or anything like that, just the actual white. And I figured I was already doing multiple different paints, different tools. This is just going to kind of be an everything sort of piece. <laughs> Try different techniques, different tools, different paints. Let's just go all out here. So we got Liquitex, we got PBO paints, we have this is deco art, the white, and the metallic also is white, or it's not white, it's metallic. <laughs> Gonna leave that one in there. No editing out the bloopers today. And then one more ring around this guy. Okay. So I don't really always have a plan. I just kind of start in the middle and work my way out. <laughs> so I don't uh, always plan out what the mandala is going to be. I just kind of look at it and see what I have for space and what I think will fit in that space. And so let's do... Let's just do this on our plus sign ones. So just on four of these, and just have the etcher tool. Like I said, I still don't know what to call these things. The Zentangle people said they're called mukas. Medical people would probably call them something else. <laughs> but it's just a fun little element, this little curly swipe. So you start like you're making a dot, and then you just curl around it. This one's almost like you're doing the top of a number two. Drawing the number two, and then pull the tail out, and then just kind of give it a little flick to go up. And then this is down and around. And then just extend that tail up to the top. And just to extend this tail farther, you just grab a little bit from the end and just pull it farther out.
sunk a little weird shaped, so let me just fix that there. So there you go, around the four that make your plus sign. We did these. So now I'm going to show you with a dotting tool. And this is just one of the smaller ends to the dotting tools, but you dip it once and then work your way down and around, and as the paint runs off the tool, the dots get smaller. And then we're just going to do two rings. And this color is called diaxacene. It's a really dark purple that actually shows up black, so I just tossed a dash of titanium white in with it to lighten it up a little. If I was doing this on a back black or black background, it tends to blend in, but this nice magenta, it's nice and bright on the magenta, plus the white, just a dash of white in there helps brighten it up a little bit. And we're going to do two rings around the 45 degree angle ovals. See I ran out of paint on that one. You can just dip it from one of your other dots that are still wet and it'll have less paint than dipping it in your palette again. And this is Lavender from the Deco Art Americana series. And it's just, a, it's lighter, so I'm just going to do the one ring around the dark, darker ones. I think too from this angle then you can see kind of just barely touching it to the piece. It's not not like a stamp, it's not, but it honestly doesn't matter because the fluidity of the paint will just help you make the circles. You just kind of get into a rhythm. Start at the top, doo -doo -doo, down around the bottom. I used to count when I first started, I used to count them all, but then you run in the risk of starting yourself a little, <laughs> for lack of a better term, loony because I used to get so obsessed with I had nine dots around that side, I have to have nine dots around this side, or oh my gosh, I put 11 around that one, I need to squeeze 11 into this one, but it's not going to fit, so it caused a little more stress than I wanted. <laughs> I just I just wanted it to look pretty, ultimately, not. it doesn't have to be 100% organized. I know you nurses, we're going to have a hard time with that, but it's a lot nicer when we just let it go and enjoy the time painting. And either way, no one's going to come back and count and say, oh my gosh, you only put seven around that circle. <laughs> Let's not take on any more stress than need be. So I'm back with the brush, and this is the titanium white again. I'm going to do it down both sides. I just sometimes just go along for muscle memory purpose in the same direction and then this way I'm working back so I can just keep flipping the piece the same direction the whole time. But you'll see, you start to get a preference as to how you move things around. I like to have the part I'm working on in front of me best just because my eyesight is a little funky. <laughs> just had to get some glasses but that happens when we get older. So whatever works best for, for you. Dotting's a little more difficult to work on an easel with your piece 
vertical just because a lot of times the fluidity of the paint will run and you don't want your dots running. You want them to stay in circles. So gravity assist here with the flat work, although it does take a toll on your neck, so be kind to yourself and give yourself breaks. This is the large 3mm dotting tool. And I'm just going at the top of each of those white swipe elements with a large dot of that purple there. And unfortunately the color on my screen is not the greatest, but this is a baby pink, very light pink. So light that it actually looks white almost on my screen. <laughs> But I was going for Valentine's colors with the reds and the purples. And this is Deco Arts Americana. It's actually called Baby Pink. But after you varnish, varnish it and look at it in person, I mean, it's it's not white. I promise. It's just the color on my screen is a little off. So, back with the etcher, I'm just going to drag some swipes around these now. This nice rich purple pizzazz color. And I'm just starting at the base where the baby pink meets the white and then I'm pulling it up, pulling that tail up towards the top of the white. I'm going to switch to the lavender just because I like to use all my colors. <laughs> and we're going to pop that one up here on this side. I also kind of have an affinity for it asymmetrical designs so the colors are opposite each other here. Lights and darks, still purple range. So now I'm going to start with some Tuscan Red here, and I'm just going to pull one swipe down into the center of those purple and baby pink dots there, and I'm going to do it in every single space. So you're going to end up with eight, eight little swipe elements at the top here like a fan. I always start with the middle one at the top just because then it gives you your guide again to go off from. And I'm going to put a little dot of that in there. Let's do it in all, we'll do it in all the ovals here. Okay, so now this is Fun Fuchsia, and our Fun Fuchsia, I think, will go on either side of those reds. And I know I'm using a lot of different paints, a lot of different stuff in here, so I'll post it all in the description as always. That way you guys can check them out for yourselves.
from Fuchsia. And I try to be kind of whimsical at times with the swipes just because I like to have it looking like there's movement, but you could be more deliberate about the sizes and actual tucking it into each space and making sure that everything's uniform and that will give you a whole nother look to your design and pattern too. This lovely color is called Peony Pink. It's kind of a, like a salmon pink almost. Again, my monitor is not doing it justice. I mean, my camera is not doing it justice here, but you get the idea. You do a sort of gradient from dark the lighter pinks after this peony will pop, pop the baby pink in there too. And the thing about the swiper or etcher rather is it makes swipes really easy to place. You just dot and then drag it with the same tool. And if you want it smaller on the outskirts you can use the metal end it's at the opposite end. This one's not metal. The gold end is plastic, but you could flip it around and use the actual metal end to kind of pull the paint down. Especially if it's a really tight area, although this is working out pretty well here. I am putting less paint for these two. These are smaller on the sides, just so you can take the metal and just kind of tuck it into that space. And this again is the baby pink. So you just get like an ombre gradient, dark to light, in your pink zones. You don't have to use the same exact colors that I'm using. You can go with whatever you have at home, palette-wise, color combos. You could do these with blues and greens. That would be really pretty. So I'm just kind of debating how I want. I want to do like a giant petal out here, I think. And that will encompass both of the pink fans. So I'm just going to kind of measure the distance here that I have and how far up I have here. And then you can kind of make your own stencil from cardstock or cardboard or whatever. I mean, this was like an insert, I think, on a box. So I'll just measure it the length that I had on my um, heart, just two and a half inches across and then an inch up for the depth of the piece. So two and a half and then the center of the two and a half to match up because we're just going to sketch out a petal and that way too you know all your petals will be the same all the way around because you're just going to use this as a stencil, see? And this is a little bit easier than drawing it each time all the way around, or you could even fold it in half like we do snowflakes as kids. And then you only have to draw half of it and it'll be exactly symmetrical. Like that, and then you'll cut it out, open it up, and you'll have both sides for your stencil. But I didn't do that. I mean, I usually eyeball it. I'm just doing this because you all ask different ways to, to get your stuff to be the same size for your pattern all the way around and you can literally make your own little pieces of stencil. And then just make sure your paint's dry and then place it on each of these sections here over our little fans. I'm just going to do four. And see, so you can see the guideline there. And we're just going to do them in white dots with the brush in the billiard room for any of you who have played Clue. No, just funny. We've been playing that with the kids lately for game night. Miss Scarlet in the billiard room with the candlestick. <laughs> My youngest daughter is really good at mysteries and figuring out clues and stuff like that, so that's one of her favorite games. She tends to kind of dominate <laughs> all 
all of us. Her and she and her father both. But this again is the paintbrush with the white titanium on the magenta heart. There we go. I got my three in. Seriously, guys, we just have to relax, take a breather, laugh at things, make fun of ourselves. <laughs> Be calm and just enjoy the time that we have painting together. We don't have a lot of time in our lives, especially not therapeutic calm time. So if you have time to paint, this is this is your time to just relax. Play some music. Mute me out if you don't want to hear me talking. But do something to just kind of chill these days. And make something pretty. This is just an extreme close-up here, and I'm, you can see there's no trick, it's just a paintbrush. I'm literally just pushing down, lighting up, working around the same area. I just start off up here because I want the bigger, fatter dots there, and then as I go to the top, where the point is, I just make them a little bit smaller. But that's another way you can change your design, make them all the same size, make them all little, make them all big. Do it as a solid line. I mean, mandalas are almost, I don't want to say infinite, but they're pretty limitless as far as creating different designs each time. I like to say it's like a choose your own adventure. All right, so this big honking guy, <laughs> this acrylic rod, I actually don't even know what size it is. It's just huge. Let me measure it. over three quarters of an inch. But you can see it. It's so delicious with that pink. This one is, the pink is actually the fuchsia. But then I'm going to grab this Liquitex marker pen because I wanted to try these out myself and just kind of see if I varnish over them if they don't bleed. That will make me happy. But it's a nice accent color. It's almost it's close to that color pink. And I misspoke. I meant to say that it was peony for that giant dot. Peony pink. But this is just the fuchsia marker. And they have a whole vibrant set that these come in with the large nibs. But again, I said I was just going to grab everything possible, all the paints, <laughs> all the tools, for just testing out everything today, just having some fun. Oh, this delicious one is champagne. One of my favorites. I really need to stop using it so much. Or maybe not, because it's really pretty. But it is just delicious. Just rich and shiny. It does not lose that shine. It doesn't lose the shine when you varnish it. It's oh, it's just amazing. And they have a couple of them. There's a multi-surface. These are all decor. It's the multi-surface champagne. There is also the extreme sheen champagne and then the matte metallics. Same like the rose gold. I have a champagne in that as well. And I'm just following our guideline of the white. See how I ran out? I'm going to go back and grab it some more here. Just so I can stretch it up to that point at the top of the petal, the peak. And really the swipes are slow, controlled, put the paint where you want it type. And then it allows the paint to constantly wick to the surface. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself by going so quick because it breaks that connection.
And just because I am obsessed with this champagne, I am going to use it on the outside here as well to just kind of bulk up our border. You're just putting little dots in between all the larger ones that we put down first thing. And I'm off in the wilderness up here, but I'm just doing the same thing, I promise. <laughs> I need to move my camera farther away so that we can actually get the whole piece in. But till summer, this is a work in progress studio down here. <laughs> and it's freezing here in my basement. along, same size, in between each of those and the little crook, just like that. So see how I'm just like wiggling my hand a little bit, that's just how you make the dots. So you just wiggle, wiggle, and it breaks that string. Remember I talked about the metallics, it does happen even with the brushes, but also with the brush it helps you make the dots. Alright, some delicious rose gold dots with the 3mm dotting stylus here at the peak. What's up? Let's do three little dots here above our pink, just to tie in the metallics some more. I think he will go around the outside. Just following that magenta line that we drew earlier with the paint marker. And you can see how where I drew with the paint markers it was just freehand, but you can again make yourself a stencil if you wanted those to be even as well. It's really just taking your time, going down and around, letting that little string drop each time. How are you all doing? I'm sure it's looking fabulous. Alright, so now I'm going around the inner part of that magenta marker with berry cobbler, but I do want to say it is fairly dark. Almost when it's dry doesn't show. I haven't varnished this heart yet, so I'm not sure if it'll pop back out after I varnish it, but just fair warning that it's a little dark. And if you really wanted this row to show, then I would suggest you would put a little bit of white in it, just something a little bit lighter. But again, it's the berry cobbler. Which is a gorgeous color, it shows up awesome on black and other, on white, anything that I've done before, but on something that's already a magenta background, it gets kind of lost. Which is fine, some things could be subdued and make it look like a lovely art piece, I just tend to 
feel the go bold or go home. All right. So with the etcher, I'm just going to do a couple right across here of our curly swipe mukas. Tadpoles, I think I called them in the first, <laughs> first one. But you know, just kind of like a swirl around the dot. And then this is just dragged out towards our point, but keeping it flat as opposed to going up around a pedal, just keeping it flat, kind of pointing that tail at the point of the pedal, where the peak of the pedal is. Kind of like a little platform. And we're going to do four of these all the way around. which ultimately individually will be the eight, sorry, but it'll be four elements of the little platforms because it's above each of our pedal peaks. And let's put some swipes in here. I had an issue on the other side there, so I have some wet paint, but this is all white. I'm just doing kind of like a little crown fan here at the top. And this, because this is a heart shape, I mean, mandalas, they tend to be symmetrical all the way around. What you do one place, you do all the way around. But kind of like an equation balances it out, equality, that type of thing. But because we're in a heart shape here, I have to kind of navigate it a little bit different. Same with when I did the hedgehog or the whale, you know, doing the pear apple shapes, doing all the different shapes that have, that are not circular. So here I'm just showing you with the dotting tool and the baby pink that you can do the swipes with the tool as well. But I'm just swiping up to the peak of our petal just to kind of add into that space there. And back to the baby pink with some dots on the inner part here under the berry cobbler just to fill in that spot. reminds me of some of the textiles I saw in Turkey. My sister had a wedding there and we, I went with her. It was beautiful. We went to Ankara, landed in Istanbul. This is just some baby pink going into the red dots here. All right, gonna steal that rose gold again to add to our piece and I want to make kind of like a flame. Does that make sense? So it's like a little flame at the top. So just let your brush stroke be a little bit longer on one side. And actually you could just do it like the mukas, like a swipe and then just fill it in after. So if you're only using dotting tools, then you can still do it with the dotting tools. It almost looks like a lobster claw. I'm craving seafood. <laughs> and then at the top of each one of these, I'm going to go in here with um, this 2020 color was the cactus flower. And it's like the perfect blend of just a little bit of pink and coral together. It's really pretty. Again, the video is not doing it justice, but I'm, I promise you, you won't be disappointed if you get the cactus flower paint. It's gorgeous. I 
and it can be a little awkward dotting around this that's not round, but just leave that little space where the flicker at the top is. Don't indent it because it'll change the shape of walking the dots around, but just leave that as like a little bit of negative space in there. And so we're doing two rounds of the cactus flower. Around each of our flames, our rose gold flames. having some fun with fuchsia again pulling those colors around from the center out two rows of the fuchsia And I just want to kind of make sure that I am pointing the peak at the V of the heart. Just, just for symmetry sake, but looking at it. On these sides it doesn't matter that much, but at the point it's... And this last is a purple petal. It's kind of like a light lavender. You could even add white to the lavender we used. Just a lighter purple. And we'll do two rows around each. I think we can tuck in two rows. Yeah, I think we can tuck in two rows on the side. That's the thing too, is look around your whole piece to make sure that you can fit two rows or three rows or whatever the element you're doing and just make sure, take a quick eye swipe around to make sure that you can fit it all around. You can see we're about 48 minutes, I don't know, just under an hour for this. So it's a good time, good chunk of time to work your way through, but don't feel pressed by time. There's a lot of sped up videos where you feel like, oh my gosh, I have to hurry up and do that. So take your time, pause the video if you need, spend some time painting each element and enjoy it. And I'm debating now if I want to put another row or maybe we'll do swipe around that with the purple. I don't know. I'm debating what I want to do here. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with that purple we had here. And just kind of show you, it's been a while since I did this because since I got the etcher I haven't been doing a lot of swipes with the brush, but I just wanted to show you here that you can do the swipes with the brush as well. 
and just kind of roll it up at the end to make that little tail. And it is pushed down harder at the beginning. And then pull that paint all the way up. And it's more about your pressure that you're putting on it, so it's a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about all oh, the paint's running off the tool or redipping or dragging it from the tail again. It's just a matter of how much paint you put on. I tend to overload my brush quite a bit when I'm doing swipes with the brush. But you can see it takes a little bit of finesse even to get that tail smaller, even though this, this kind of brush does come to a point. Dragging it out and using different pressure takes a little bit of practice. So, And you get out of practice if you don't do it all the time. So I've been using the edger a lot more lately. And so I'm not as on the ball with these. But you can see my point about painting it out. It is... You know, you don't have to worry about dipping the paint again, dragging the tail. It just is another tool that just takes practice, so it's just another thing you can use to kind of work to paint, paint dots, paint swipes, make your creations. Alright, let's throw a little of that purple up here too to kind of continuing it through the piece. Almost like a little apostrophe. And let's do a dot of it up here. So this is more of like symmetry with the colors too. So I'm out at this outer layer with the swipes and the little apostrophe. So let's put some dots too. And that way you kind of are, you're bringing the color throughout the piece, but also it's certain levels of each section of the mandala. So this is a cactus flower dot, and I'm just doing one little dot of cactus flower above it, but you can't tell that it's different on the screen. <laughs> and these are the peony pinks. We'll do a few dots here to work that pink around into more parts of our mandala. And now I'm going to go back to the etcher and bring that peony pink down and around our champagne dots. So the thicker end is actually the top this time as opposed to doing our swipes with the thicker end towards the bottom and pulling it out. This is the thicker part at the top. And then you're pulling the paint down in to the base of those champagne dots. But again, it's just another way. Flip the elements upside down, do it backwards, upwards. <laughs> different color, different thickness. Every single time you can make a different mandala. Isn't it exciting? It's so exciting! <laughs> Alright, hope you guys are enjoying this video. I'm a little caffeined up, I guess, today, but I really just wanted to stress the point that we can keep the the good times coming with the YouTube videos, um, if you just leave a little comment, even a little heart or any kind of comment where you're from in the comment section below if you liked the video and you want to see more of my videos on YouTube, um, just because that way their algorithm picks up that there is engagement happening on the video. <laughs> So if you want to keep them going, please help a girl out and make a little comment. Even just leave an emoji. Even that is something. Also, if you want to be notified each time, you can just click the subscribe button and a little bell next to it. And it will give you a notification as soon as I upload new videos. You'll get notified. So peony pink in the center of these two. So it went peony was the large, berry cobbler was the next one, and now I'm doing a small peony again. Just a little oval here. And now we're going to work in that baby pink. 
around the outside here. And I want to bulk it up enough, I think I'll do three rows. And I'm just walking them out to smaller at the bottom with my etcher tool. And I decided not the baby pink, I switched to the Gen Crafts baby pink just so I could test out these new acrylic colors from Gen Crafts. And they are working pretty well. These are their pouring acrylics. They're pretty amazing. They're fluid enough right out of the bottle. So I tested it with the etcher, the paintbrush, now I'm going to try a dotting tool. And you can see we're getting pretty good results. And they have a wide variety of colors too. Fluid right out of the bottle. No mixing, no mediums. And then we'll swing over to this side too. Just with the brush real quick here. Dot down each side. And this is just because I'm more comfortable with the brush, you guys. You can use your dotting tool. So it's probably about the one millimeter size dotting tool, the smaller end. And then walk it out till the paint runs off the tool. So much fun! So this is with the metallic one, the larger jar of the champagne. Actually, no, I'm switching. This one is pearl. So I'm just going to kind of cordon off this top lobe of the heart. I don't really know what you would call it in painting terms. Going to the RN zone. <laughs> the top lobe of your heart. No. I'm just going to make an arc across here just to separate our mandala from the top part of the heart because I want to do something a little bit different on the lobes. You can see the metallic, I gotta wiggle it just a little bit, <laughs> make her a little dot. And I'll bring it right down to the top of the element here with the purple swipes. And we'll do the same on the other side here, the other lube. I don't know if you guys can see it on the video though, I just want to mention I did, I just kind of etched out a line, see from that second rose gold dot where the point of the heart is. You can see it, I think I'm working my way up to it now, but I just sketched a line so that I could follow it to make sure that was where I wanted the arc to go. I did not freehand that, just so you know, I'm not that good. Guidelines can help, and don't feel bad about using them either, I mean, go for it, it makes the design work. So I just, that way I got them even on both sides too. From the top of the purple swipes just to that second dot, the rose gold. So now I'm going to start filling in the upper little crook here on each of those. Just put one little dot in between those. It's just really quick, methodical, one little dot. And it helps kind of bulk up that border a little bit too. 
and it's still with the pearl. And I left the two spaces under our arch blank from it. I didn't put them on there. All right, so now I'm gonna grab my etcher and some white. And I'm gonna start up here in the center of the lobe and I'm just going to pull out some really long swipes. <laughs> and again, see, this is why I don't have to really use the brush as often for the longer swipes, because if you put enough paint on this tool and overload it, you're golden. You can just pull it right out. So this takes a little bit of finesse, but not really. Kind of could do like a white picket fence type look up here, where I'm just a little bit of space next to each other and a little bit of an angle at each time, pulling it down to the arc. And that arc will help you kind of keep your angle too. So as I move doing swipe after swipe, you'll see it starts to create the little arch. And not until I get to like the really smaller areas do I have to actually angle the swipes. So these are just straight to arch. So rather than dragging the tails all into one another like we would the little fan area, this is just straight down, straight down, straight down, all with titanium white. Alright, so now I'm kind of getting into the the angled arc here. So just a little bit on tilting each one to pull it a little bit on a diagonal. And then a little more drastic. Let me just fix that one up a little. A little more drastic of an angle. See that one's a lot more a lot more on the diagonal. And then the last one will just follow the arc here. Little boink. But you can see how that metal end comes in handy to just shape it to where you want it. And then we're going to finish off the other side down into the little crook of the arc there. I'm just going to speed it up just a little bit here. I think you guys get the idea. You're all smarties. Just make a big blop up the top of the white and pull it out to a point. And then the same as we work our way down here, just each one is a little bit more progressive into a diagonal on an angle, on an angle. There you go, on an angle. And that way you're working with your arc and you kind of get that visual of the arc, if that makes sense. And then I'm almost going straight up here. And then just like we did on the other lobe, we're going to do on this side. I start up at the top middle just because that helps me with my spatial relations. You guys are obviously welcome to start wherever you need to start, but for me I start at the middle on the top and then work my way around the arc. Oh, the light is so bright. <laughs> and so this way I did the, the side first, so we're already turning into the arc here because it's gotten smaller. And I'm actually overloading the tool, so I'm doing the two dots there. Reshape it a little with the metal end while it's still wet.
and then we just have this last little section here. It's back to really long. You guys are doing awesome! You can even use your dotting tools to pull this out and they're harder to get a lot more paint on but just make a big dot at the top and even drag it out with toothpicks if you don't have the etcher. Something pointy, skewers. Start putting these on our angle. And you can see I didn't count how many there were. I didn't. I honestly don't know. Some of you might have <laughs> watching this, but once you get to the final piece, you, you can't tell. You can't tell if I did, you know, 25 and 23 or... You just can't. See? It looks awesome. You guys, you did a great job. I just want to say there's something around the outer part where I had a bit of a problem with my computer crashing. So towards the end of the pink elements I did put another larger rose gold dot and the tiny little mukas there with a white dot at the top. And then I did like the swirl swipe at the base you can see of white where it's a little bit of a curly swipe down into the vertical, the vertice of the heart. Embarrassy? I can't remember what that word is. <laughs> down into the point of the heart at that angle. Alright. I hope you guys enjoyed doing this with me. It was so much fun. I'm really sorry I didn't get out in time for Valentine's Day, but these days life is busy and hectic somehow still. So. I'm just working and plugging along like y'all. Alright, remember leave me a comment down low, say hi, help me keep these videos going, and uh, if you have any questions, always feel free to ask, please. And if I can't answer, I know other people in this community will stop in and answer, so don't feel abandoned. You can always email me on the contact page at my website too. Honestly, you're not bothering me. And my phone number is on there as well. I know some people have called me, called me about orders. So try to answer whenever I can. I love being in this community with you guys. And I hope that this was a calming journey for you today. I will post all the links as usual in the description. I know I said that before, but I'm just running over my head to make sure that I covered everything. Alright, you guys. Have a great day. Happy painting. I hope you enjoyed this heart and I will see you all again soon. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on Facebook at Miranda Patron Art, Instagram at Miranda Patron Art. Come say hi. Alright. I'm out. <laughs>